let's uh, let's talk about Donald Trump because uh, the march of the inevitable impeachment, at least in the House, is on its way. Now, uh, this is the latest here. Where, um, however, part of the pushback is about how crooked the process has been when the Democrats have been in charge. In fact, on uh, Tuesday morning in the United States, they are going to release a report into how all of this started. This being the Russia stuff. Now. For those that are expecting some sort of, uh, you know, giant, uh, giant uh, map to be brought out showing that everyone involved was crook, that's not going to happen. In fact, the only people who've been able to be interviewed for this are, are the people who are current employees of the government. So many of those who were involved in 2016, be it from the uh, FBI, CIA or inside the government, well, they weren't interviewed. But, Rowan, we have these... Two reports that will be running. We have the Democrats who will march towards impeachment. The debate is whether you go the full loony way, which is uh, impeaching for breathing and 750 <laughs> other things, or in the districts that were won by Democrats but places where Trump won big and may well win big again in November. They just want one Ukraine phone call, one bop on the nose. What do you say about these duelling... Well, reports? Well, there, it's all going to end up bad, pretty badly for the Democrats at the end because... We know that uh, Donald Trump has twi twice been set up, basically. The whole Russian hoax was a set-up, the Ukraine hoax is a set-up. And ultimately, as with the Russian hoax, when it all came out that uh, actually, you know, this probably was set up by people within... Maybe people within the Australian government, but uh, certainly people within the um, uh, Clinton team, uh, you then have to go, well, they tried it again. How ridiculous must they be? Uh, I think, it, you know, again, Trump is just laughing, as you said, four more years. Now, uh, if only we had someone here who was uh, as committed to the Trump cause as, uh, as Rowan and I are. Oh, that's right, Richard and Janine are here. Um, <laughs> Janine, how do you feel about the, uh, the process that's played itself out? And, look, we know what the Democrats want to do in the House. We also know that the Republicans in the Senate won't uh, vote in any number to boot him out. So do you feel net positive or negative or everyone's been in the same corner for three and a bit Yeah, years. it's not changing anything. I mean, I can see they wanted to try and get as much out as they can to use next year but not have it in the middle of the election. I keep just thinking back to the 90s and when the Republicans tried to impeach Clinton and we got a lot further than this and, of course, he went out with record approval ratings. So it's not like we haven't seen this story before. I'm interested in um, Rowan's little dig there about members of the Australian government because that's what I'll be looking for, <laughs> that communist, that lefty, yeah. Alexander Downer who tried to bring down Trump. I will be fascinated to see where he's That's the sleeper, Janine. Oh, oh the sleeper agent. Sleeper. Who was he working for? Do you say for? that because it slithers back to Bishop and, and Turnbull? Is that well, I don't... I Does actually anyone... do see little links there. It always troubled me the at the time. Hang on, it really troubled me at the time before Trump had been elected why Turnbull and Bishop were so rude, basically, and just ignored him. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull did his first maid, his maiden speech, fortunately his only speech, at the United Nations. No, you know, didn't bother to see the guy who was, you know, stood a chance of being the next president. That always troubled me. But if you heard, I thought Chris Kenny did a great interview with Alexander Downer. Alexander's not that convincing on, you know, oh, yes, it's all very funny. Yes, it's Johnny English, it's James Bond. But... What the hell was it? There's never been a good explanation of what the hell he was doing in that wine bar with that guy, why he was there and why he, was, uh, why he then sent in those reports. There's never been a decent explanation. Is Alexander Downer part of the deep state? I, oh, I was about to say something I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I will only say this. I reckon I've heard enough of this story again <laughs> and again and again and I do not intend to further it. <laughs> by making any comment whatsoever. So that'll be a yes, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, is Donald Trump stronger or weaker at the end of this year compared to where he started and everything that's been thrown at him or he's thrown at himself? I think he's stronger. And the more the American economy performs and the more that desperate hating Democrats try and sling <clears throat> mud at him, the more loved he is among um, the people who voted for him last time and the more he's able to reach into new markets. See, I'm desperate to... Uh, I mean, how do you feel, Janine? Do you feel he's stronger than he was at the start of the year? I, I don't necessarily think so. I don't know. They haven't wounded him. There's been no smoking gun. They haven't got him. I think, as we said at the outset, people are polarised on either side. I think they're so sick of it. 
um, that they probably at this stage, either side has made up their mind. I'm not sure it's convinced anyone else, but on the other hand, um, as I said, the Republicans have been doing this since the Newt Gingrich days. It's how politics is. You've got to throw everything, use everything you can. If it backfires, then that's your problem. But I think they didn't want to be left wondering what if. Paul, now, he's stronger. He's stronger. He's oh, much I, stronger I now than he was a year ago. Unemplo as you were saying, unemployment's down. The economy's booming. There was the guy that's, on... Uh, that's got nothing to do with the impeachment process. No, no. no, no but we're saying in a, a much political stronger pos position. Yeah, because of the President. economy, not because of the well, impeachment. It's pretty important, yeah. yeah. But he's in a much stronger position. 34% now of blacks are, are, are behind him. He's, he's going gangbusters. I think the impeachment stuff is, is... It's the Angus Taylor of American politics. Which is more exciting to you, Richo? Um, uh, it's not Richo, uh, beat up on Richo night, but which is more exciting to you, that at the end of the year, uh, Trump's on his way to another four or Bill Shorten isn't in the lodge? Which hurts you more? Well, um, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not hurt by Bill Shorten not being in the lodge. <laughs> um, I'm... Uh, and I'm not hurt by, um, uh, by the Prime Minister being the Prime Minister. Um, I think he does, a, he does a pretty good job. And um, I'm an Australian first. I know. And, uh, and so I, uh, I've just got to concede that. It's just and we're 48 minutes Labor. in and no one's had a fight. I mean, this is what people come to on the money. I'm doing my best here. I, I lied about his age. I verbaled him about that. Amanda, we brought him with a thing. You two are a great dear. God, what are we going to do? Amanda and I argue all the time. Well, you must have seen spirit. us on outside as Amanda oh. and I go, hammer and tongs, arguing. Oh. I disagree with everything oh, she every, says. Every you know, what is she is doing? Is there mistletoe there? somewhere? Queensland, what have you done? Have we got mistletoe under our seats? <laughs> I've got a Donald Trump Wall Street Christmas carol at the end. Maybe Excellent. that'll be Would you like to deliver that before I ask you about no, auditing? I think or we'll we want to do auditing end. first? All right.